not so welcome friend <laughs> in my life but but it's there it's just inside and and it comes back here and there from time Hi everyone, Al Ballard is here with you today and I have my special guest with us today. I'm so excited for this conversation. She's all the way from Switzerland joining us today. Hi Ulrike. Hello, I'm very pleased to be with you. What an honor. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, so before we jump in, I will introduce uh, Elrike first. So Elrike Seminati, a highly regarded coach and consultant, brings a wealth of experience as a former C-level executive to her expertise in authentic leadership and impactful communication by blending the latest self-development methodologies with her extensive practical knowledge of corporate communications. She enables leaders to establish trust and credibility through effective communication. Ulrike's expertise extends beyond her CCA certification as a coach. She has a deep understanding of how to lead effectively across hierarchies and diverse cultural backgrounds. Her clients benefit from her pragmatic and user-friendly tools that enable them to make lasting improvements. Yes, welcome, Ricky. I love, I love your cultural background mix and and communication um, expertise, and it's so important, right? So, before we jump into the, the into this conversation of communication, um, please tell us the country you're originally from and what country do you call home. So the first question is simple, <laughs> the country I'm originally from. I'm from Germany. I was brought up there. And at the age of 24, I left Germany to move to France. So I spent actually now over half my life in France. And uh, of this, the past 15 years, I work in Switzerland. First of all, commuting across the border and then taking an apartment in Zurich, which is a bit far away from the French border and still having a house in France. So I'm like navigating between these three countries, Germany, Switzerland, and France. And if you ask me which country is home, I was really thinking, I don't know. <laughs> if you really forced me to, to choose one, I would probably say France, actually. Um, but it's like, for me, it's one of these Western European things or this mixed region, even with two different languages that is that I call home. Hmm. I love that. Um, so you don't, I don't, I don't often meet the three countries mix. I usually meet the two country mix. <laughs> and um, I don't know if I can personally relate, but I know in Europe, it's a little bit, everything is much closer so you can commute. Right. Um, but it, it is a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful mix. I love that. Um, so tell us why do you do what you do and what makes you unique in doing that, what you do? So I'm helping leaders, as you said in my bio, I'm helping leaders to be authentic at work and to communicate with impact. So the, the piece around the authenticity is a real passion for me because I was a leader myself. I climbed up this whole career ladder and I was actually never authentic. I realized that after 20 years of career, what a waste. <laughs> so I made a great career, no, no problem with that, but I was never happy with myself. Mm -hmm. And when I stepped out of the corporate world, I realized that. And I thought, there's so many people there who do that, who, who put this corporate armor on or this kind of corporate persona. They step into the shoes of the leader type they think they have to be to climb up the career ladder or to be respected or accepted in a certain group. And they lose so much energy in that and so, so much joy as well, because you, you can't enjoy that. You can't even enjoy your successes properly because you have the feeling that actually no, somebody else did it for you. Yeah. Another person. Yeah. And this is why I, I thought I want to do something about that. And I do not only want to train leaders on good communication skills, but on a way of being. So for me, it's all about combining the doing, the skills. That's the easier, pretty straightforward part with the being. Who are you? How do you feel inside of yourself? What emotions trigger you to do or to not do something? To be a good communicator or not? Or any other task that you have in life, any other action? And... Um, I think what makes me unique in that sense is that I have a lot of hands-on experience in big and small companies myself. So I know how that feels like a leader. 
And on the other hand, I have this now pretty solid coaching background because I'm a transformational coach, a systemic coach, an NLP practitioner. So there are a lot of techniques that I combine with this, well, with this very hands-on and pragmatic approach. So that's that's probably the blend that I have in there. Yeah, I love that. And I love, uh, so I can totally relate to what you're saying about this where it, it gets mixed up who you are in a corporate environment and being in a corporate environment. Yeah. It's, it's um, you know, we, we kind of follow, we kind of being, but we forget who we truly are. And, um, and so I love how you combine with that knowledge of being a coach, being transformation coach, and you combine that and you bring that to corporations, to companies to help people find that within themselves because within the company, there is this, this, this concept of um, intrapreneur, right? Where they are working for the company, but you know they are still using their strengths and their persona uh, to 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 benefit their corporate ladder or corporate career as well as the company and um, I see how you contribute to that so I think that's that's beautiful um, at the same time focusing on authenticity of people yeah um, so in this in this career in your corporate career and your uh, business now your business practice now what was your biggest lesson or something you had overcome maybe building this business or building a life that you could share with us mm -hmm. as a multinational woman as well for me the biggest hurdle i had to overcome and still have to overcome quite often today uh -huh. is imposter syndrome very classic <laughs> <laughs> very classic thing it um I know that people always perceived me even in my corporate roles as someone who is self-assured and professional and a high performer and all of that and inside of myself I had this huge feeling of I will be discovered anytime that I'm not good enough <laughs> mm -hmm. and it is it's very massive actually it's something that I carried with me a long time and before I went myself into this self-development journey I didn't realize I didn't put a name tag on it either. And I didn't realize how much this influences all my decisions, my ways of being, and especially how much it influenced my authenticity and the fact that I always try to be better than myself because I thought I have to be better than myself because my true self isn't good enough. And I really had to overcome that and was very heavily confronted with it when I created my own business. Especially when you're a one woman show. I mean, you you have yourself. You are your your best and on one and only employee. <laughs> and wow. wow. Then then it really hits. Then you realize if I want to achieve what I want to achieve, if I want to fulfill this mission in my life, I seriously have to handle this imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I I deliberately don't say I have to overcome it. Because it comes always back more or less. Now, obviously, it doesn't harm as much as before. I'm aware and it kicks in. I kind of kind of deal with it with a bit of an, let's say, an not so welcome friend <laughs> in my life. But but it's there. It's just inside and, and it comes back here and there from time to time in difficult situations or when something particular is triggered. And I think what I what I think is also beautiful in that is that. It's somehow a message that you can carry with you your flaws yeah. and you can still be great. You can yeah. still love yourself because I'm now at a point where I accept myself, including that one. When it shows up, it's like, okay, I hear you, but yeah. I'm doing something else. <laughs> I focus on something differently anyway. And I think this is this is true life, you know, accepting yourself with these flaws and with these challenges and the, the learnings. Yeah. And that's when you get into a learning curve and a growth curve, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's so great. Um, that's a great awareness. Do you find about yourself, you know, self-awareness and being able to actually hear that voice and stop that voice and, or, or you know, or repurpose that voice? Um, do you find that it gets harder with, with each level that we grow in business? You, not mm. that it gets harder. Do you find that you, you get that voice especially when it's you entering a new level in business uh, or, or your personal growth. Yeah, I think that is, yeah, that, 
formulated like that, yes, I think at each single step you take upwards, whatever your upwards is, yeah, it's not always, yes, always, always, exactly. always. Yeah. As soon as you take, let's say, a growth step, you take a step out of your comfort zone and then an, another version of your imposter syndrome is again kicking in um another level of self-confidence needs to be reached you need to step into more confidence because your task is new it's it seems to be bigger it seems to be more complex and so with every step in life you need to grow that with you because if not it's true it's a very good question actually makes me reflect a bit on my corporate life where i didn't do that uh consciously so when i was growing into my roles I didn't grow my confidence with it. I rather grew my self-doubts because as I didn't grow my confidence, logically, my self-doubts were growing because my tasks were becoming more complex. I had more responsibility. Yeah. And so I think it's a trap not to fall into and to be aware that mm -hmm. when you take a new position or you move to a different country, you know, some of my clients have this situation where they move to another country and then they have to learn the language and they feel like, oh, I'm starting from scratch. I have no confidence anymore. I tell them that's normal because you you are stepping into a completely era of your life and you need to come with a new package. You need to like your baggage, actually. You need to put into your bag the right level of self-confidence, probably a bigger portion of that than you had before and self-love, acceptance, whatever. And be aware that your doubts also come in a greater portion with you and you have to balance that out once more and once more every time you have a change. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's interesting also. Yeah, and I can totally relate, uh, definitely, you know, with with new levels. It's interesting how different parts come up. Um, even if it's not imposter syndrome, there's something comes up. And that's where I really love this, this journey of entrepreneurship, right? Because we are really, first and foremost, we're growing within ourselves, who we are. But the other part of it is also it really exposes us entrepreneurship really exposes us to who we are and so we have to face all of our I mean doubts and obstacles right through this um and that I think because that's that's at the end that's the beauty of it at the end because we grow through it um yeah so thank you for sharing that openly and honestly uh Enrique my next question so even even though we we know so a lot of the times right we we actually know the steps we need to do and what we should do to succeed um right and but sometimes we don't take that action appropriately and why do you think that is why do you think we do that i think we do that because we are evolving in a world of doing yeah we focus on the results and on the action we think we are logical people, rational thinkers, taking our decisions consciously. What an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say the illusion is the reality that we think that's a reality. And this is why we, we set ourselves goals. We think we can achieve this result. And the actions most of the times are relatively clear. And a simple example is everybody knows that to be healthy, we have to do sports in some way. And how many people don't do it? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it. But only a smaller portion of people is really doing something for that on a regular and ongoing basis. The same with healthy food, for example. We all know it. Yeah. But how many chocolate and chips are we eating? Yeah. So these are the very obvious examples. And, and we have that same situation at work when you procrastinate on something. Whereas we know if I send this email today, it would be really helpful. But then we don't do it. And actually what is what is hindering us in between the knowing and the doing is that we have not the right emotion about it, that there's a feeling that holds us back or we do not have the emotion that triggers the action that in the other way around. And I think it's super important to understand our own motivations, our own triggers, mm -hmm. and also some of the limiting beliefs that hold us back to take action. For example, if you're an entrepreneur and you're believing that you're not good enough, you will procrastinate on sending emails out to people on LinkedIn you don't know because you have that huge fear of rejection. And you will procrastinate from day on to the next day to the next day. And then you send five instead of 50 out yeah. and you will not develop your business, for example. So I think it's super important to understand what's going on in our mind when we do not take the actions where, whereas we know what would be exactly the right thing to do to achieve our results. And this is something I'm working on quite a lot. Uh -huh. uh, part of my keynote speech uh it's it's this thing i think we, we just don't do that enough to to really think of 
we think of our goals, goal setting, super important, it's wonderful. And many people set themselves goals and all of that is great. But if we don't know where's our point of departure, where are we really coming from? How do we know which road to take towards this goal? You know, we don't know the 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 point of departure. So we know the point of destination, the final one, but then we don't know how to get there. And I think there is something in there which I also see a lot in organizations when people are asked to love the values of the company, to live the leadership behaviors, yeah. to uh, embrace the overall goals, and they don't do it. They know they should do it, but they don't do it because the emotion is not there. They have no personal connection to it and nobody helped them to create that personal connection because self-awareness is not coming all alone people have to ask you some questions so that you can reflect on yourself and if nobody helps them and people are just trying to yeah somehow buy in what they're asked to but it's it's not happening with the heart and it's not happening with passion and with the true motivation that usually your boss will expect from you or your clients will expect from you yeah 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 um yeah i i like that i like that and do you think it's in business do you think Sometimes we keep procrastinating because it's not our strengths or it's not our it's not what we are good at. Um, and that's why maybe when appropriate, we should delegate that specific task, whatever that is. Do you think that could be part of it too? Where if I love doing, if I'm good and I love whatever, like, you know, being a visionary or, or, or creating, um, putting together the details of the project or doing sales. Do you think that could help also with taking action faster if we actually know where where we should be putting our attention is because that's what I am good at? Yeah. I mean, when we, when we know we are good at something, usually we take the action much easier. Wow. Um, Right. But then we, we might not do the things that are really important and we uh -huh. might do things that are less important, but more comfortable because when we do things we are good at, we stay in our comfort zone, basically. Right. As soon as we have to do something we're not good at, we have to get out of that. And then a lot of fears are kicking in and it's hard to admit that. I mean, who wants to think about fears every day? Certainly no one. And this is why we push them aside. Yeah. But very often we don't do something because inherently there's this fear of being rejected somehow for that. Mm -hmm. So we don't even try, or it's this fear of failure. So even if we know if I did that, I'm sure I, I will succeed, but I don't do it. Why don't I do it? Well, right. because as I haven't started it, I cannot really fail because I haven't even tried, which is totally wrong, actually. Because yeah. as you, try, you fail automatically, but <laughs> we are not logical beings. We yeah. are like, really not logical beings. So there's this... Um, these things kick in and I think it's it's worth to hold on mm -hmm. if, if you don't do something and ask yourself why not and what could motivate me what in this task even if I don't like it is there something in it for me that's maybe not the first thing I see but maybe something that comes as a consequence or maybe only two months later is there something which you can find to connect to that I like that yeah, I definitely like that. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great question. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to one of our final questions: Is what does it mean for you to be a woman of the world? I think it's all about being inspired and inspiring others. It's just this connection when you speak to other women around the globe who have very different perspectives on the one hand, and at the same time the same ones. You know yeah. that feeling? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Totally. It's great. Um, yeah. There's this richness of diversity, and at the same time, there's so much common ground, and I, I really like that. Uh, as a solopreneur, I couldn't live without it. Also, it's it's new, like the the air that I breathe. I need that connection with others from different perspectives to just get always a fresh pair of a fresh pair of, of of eyes or something that is another perspective on things even if we talk about similar things like you and I do now but it's always refreshing to speak to someone about these topics I definitely feel the same too yeah every time I speak to to a woman from a different um culture or a different country um you know I always learn something new or even you know just a different environment that she grew up in and, and all that so definitely thank you for sharing that Rike um so we're going to move on to our rapid fire questions now 
and I'm gonna have I'm gonna ask five questions. I only have five here, and uh, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So your favorite book name is uh feel the fear and do it anyway oh i love that beautiful beach or mountains beach <laughs> favorite international destination to visit oh there are many i would say tanzania mm, yeah. okay something so, with a lot of animals <laughs> yeah no yeah yeah that's usually a tough one <laughs> uh summer or winter summer Okay. And last one is things that you have discovered about yourself recently. Recently, I have discovered how it feels when I remove all the breaks that I have and can go really go crazy <laughs> because I'm a pretty controlled person. And the older I get, Ooh, the I love more that. controlled. Yeah. And I'm releasing the breaks again, you know, like when you were like really young and you just did whatever and didn't care. And and get, getting back to that mindset from time to time is fantastic. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes, losing that control. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for sharing, Ulrike. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. This was wonderful. I appreciate it. I know it's evening. I hope you have a nice evening and I'll talk to you soon.